Hi folks! I've been asked by a few of you how I made this high voltage power supply that I use in many of my videos. So I've taken it apart so I can put it back together again for you to see how I did it. Note that this power supply puts out up to 30,000 volts DC or direct current. Here's the circuit for the power supply. Notice that its input is 0 to 24 volts DC. I'll show you later where to get that. I'll start with the parts. There aren't many. You'll need two resistors, a 220 ohm 3 watt resistor and a 27 ohm 2 watt resistor. Also a 4700 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. You'll need two 2N3055 power transistors. The transistors will be mounted on heat sinks to take the heat away. The transistors will be mounted on the heat sinks using mounting kits consisting of securing plates, thermal paste and thermally conductive washers. You'll also need a flyback transformer. I have this one which I bought online many years ago from a source that no longer exists. It probably came from an old TV or computer monitor. You might find one by searching online. This one doesn't have any rectifier or other circuitry attached. It has coils inside here, some connection points, a rectangular core going through it, and a very thick wire coming from the coil section that has a cap on the end. There were some wires wrapped around the core here, but I removed them to put on my own. You'll need a Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier. It's also known as a 30 kilovolt tripler. I ordered this one through a local electronics store. It's the NTE521. Here are some other part numbers, though you'll likely buy an equivalent one. This one has an input wire, a ground wire, a high voltage positive focus wire for around one third the maximum voltage, and a high voltage positive wire for up to 30 kilovolts. You can also build your own Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier from high voltage diodes and capacitors, like this single stage one I made for a different power supply. Some additional parts I'll use are these two binding posts for connecting to external power, some metal balls which were originally drawer handles I think, a small piece of perf board for cleanly mounting the resistors, and a plastic case to put it all in. And now to make it. The flyback transformer should have wires wrapped around this core here. Both coils are center tapped, meaning that there's an extra wire connected to the middle. This white one is 18 gauge wire and has 5 turns on this side and 5 more on this side. This red one is 24 gauge wire and has 2 turns on this side and 2 turns on this side. I prepared the wires with the center ones ahead of time. Do all windings in the same direction. I'm also wrapping tape around it to hold it in place. I even then paint on some liquid electrical tape to further hold it in place. And here's the finished result. Next I put as many parts in place as I can before connecting wires. I use epoxy to hold the capacitor and the perf board in place. I put the black and red binding posts in their holes in the case. I mount the transistors onto the heatsink. I have a video explaining how to do that in detail so I won't show the steps here. I'll give a link to that video at the end of this one. I then mount the heat sinks to the case. Note that the transistors are labeled Q1 and Q2 to avoid confusion. I bolt the flyback transformer in place. Notice I've labeled the various windings P1, P2, FB1 and FB2. I also bolt the voltage multiplier or tripler in place. And next to wire it all together. I start by soldering wires to the black binding post which will double as ground. To it I solder the tripler's ground and a short black wire going to the perf board where other ground wires will be sent out. Just above the one I just put in the perf board, I insert another black wire, which will go to the negative of the capacitor later. And I insert the 27 ohm resistor into the perf board. Having done that, I solder two black wires and one end of the 27 ohm resistor together. Next, I solder a red wire to the red binding post and put it in one of the perf board holes. I also put a red wire in, which will go to the positive of the capacitor later. Then I insert the 220 ohm resistor into the perf board and solder the two wires to one end of the resistor. And to finish off the perf board, I put the red center tap wire coming from the flyback in a hole between the remaining two ends of the resistors and solder it to those two ends. Moving on to the capacitor, I solder this red wire coming from the perf board to the capacitor's positive leg. And then I solder the white center tap wire coming from the flyback to that same capacitor positive leg. Next, I solder three black wires to the negative of the capacitor. The one we had soldered earlier at the perf board, plus the short one for going to transistor Q2's emitter, and the long one for going to the flyback's connection point 2, grounding it. I solder a black wire to transistor Q1's emitter. I then solder the short black wire coming from the capacitor's negative to transistor Q2's emitter, along with the black one I just soldered to Q1's emitter, connecting the two emitters together. I next solder the red wire to the outside of winding FB1 to Q1 
Q2's base. That's followed by the red wire on the outside of winding FB2 to Q1's base. Then comes the white wire on the outside of winding P1 to Q1's collector. And then the white wire on the outside of winding P2 to Q2's collector. And to finish the soldering, I soldered the long black wire coming from the capacitor's negative to the connection point 2 on the flyback. For connecting the high voltage output of the flyback to the input of the multiplier, or tripler, I've already fashioned this copper cup to the multiplier's input wire. That fits snugly into the flyback's cap. Before I put the case's cover on, notice that I laid it out so that the low voltage side is all here and the high voltage side is separated back here. And now to put on the case. Note that I pull the high voltage output wires outside to make them accessible. I screw it closed. I attach the metal balls to the output wires. This reduces the effect of the sharp edges which would leak by ionizing air. I also have these two plastic cylinders for taping the output ends to, keeping them away from the rest of the power supply. Next I need to give it some power. For that I first need to give it DC input from 0 to 24 volts. I bought this adapter from Radio Shack. It takes AC from the wall socket and puts out anywhere from 1.5 to 12 volts DC, selectable using this switch. I set it to 12 volts. I don't have a socket for this end, so I stick a wire snugly into the hole. I connect an alligator clip to the metal outside of this part and another to the wire. I need to know which part is positive and which is negative. Often it's written on the adapter, but not on this one. So I connect it to my meter and put it on the DC voltage scale, anything above 12 volts. When I plug in the adapter I find that the reading is negative. So I reverse the red and black alligator clips on the adapter. I plug it in again. Now it's positive. So since the meter is giving a positive value, the red meter probe is going to the positive of the adapter and the black meter probe is going to the negative. The outside is positive and the hole is negative. But this adapter doesn't have any ground and my power supply needs the negative to be grounded. I bought this standalone plug at a hardware store and connected a single wire to the ground prong, the longest prong in the plug. When I plug that into the wall, this wire will be connected to earth ground. I use an alligator clip to connect that to the negative side from the adapter. Now to test the power supply. I connect the adapter's negative to the black binding post and the adapter's positive to the red binding post. I plug in the adapter and there should now be high voltage on the balls. I have another of those single wire plugs with one end taped to the end of a long stick. At the end of the wire are two 120 kilo ohm resistors connected in series for a total of 240 kilo ohms. That's to protect the adapter whenever there's a spark. Anything around 250 kilo ohms and 2 watts will do. I plug it in to ground it. And when I bring the end of the resistors near the smaller power supply ball, I get a thin continuous spark. And when I bring it near the larger ball, I get a longer continuous spark. And if I take a chance and bypass the resistors, I get a real thick spark. The power supply works great. And to be safe, after I unplug the power supply, I discharge the balls again. Time to test with my lifter, or Ionocraft. I'll start by feeding my high voltage power supply using my homemade 24 volt power supply. I use banana plug cables to connect them together. I can control the voltage using this variac. I'm using my homemade 24 volt power supply because, as you can see, the high voltage one needs around 8 volts and 2.5 amps, or 20 watts, as input to do this. This adapter can give at most 12 volts and 300 milliamps, which is only 3.6 watts. But more powerful adapters are available. This laptop power supply can give 20 volts and 1.8 amps, which are 36 watts, which should do the trick. So I connect that to my high voltage power supply using a black wire. I connect the inside of the plug using a red wire. I also connect the outside to ground, to ground the negative of the power supply, just as I showed before. Time to try it. I plug the laptop power supply in and the lifter flies. But not very well because it keeps sparking. The lifter's top wire is too close for the voltage. So I raise it a small amount. When I try it again, it's very stable. And here it is in the dark, so you can see the corona. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more videos like this. That includes the one where I show how to mount the transistors to the heatsink, another about my flying lifter, or Ionocraft, and one showing how to make high voltage capacitors. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.